I'm sorry. This is my podcast, and I am not voting against the magnificent buns <laughs> of Christopher Maloney in round two. It's not going to happen. Buns and guns, move on. Buns and guns are going to move on. They solve crimes and captivate our attention. Detectives on TV. Since at least the 1930s, detectives have been a staple of television shows. Most are procedurals, like the Law & Order contingent. A bunch are from prestige dramas, a la Sherlock. Some are comedies, think Monk or Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And some are even animated. Inspector Gadget counts. But regardless, there's something intrinsically fascinating about watching brilliant minds crack cases in an hour or less. And now, the Great Pop Culture Debate podcast wants to determine who is the best TV detective of all time. Help me, Magnum P.I. I have a mystery that only... Only you can solve. It's in my bedroom. Come quickly. Well, not that quickly. I'm your host, Eric Resniak. Please help me welcome my panel for this episode. She's here for the chung chungs because these detectives may be from separate shows, but they are not equally important. It's Amy Pilot. Hi, everyone. Um, Law and Order SVU, not the best Law and Order. Oh, <laughs> no, she's dropping bombs from the beginning. Shit. Next, she lives in a small town. She writes books, but she hasn't committed. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, she hasn't solved any murders just yet. It's Kate Reculia. Give me time, Eric. You've already cut your swath through Cabot Cove. Where will you go to next? <laughs> You'll never know. And, fi <laughs> and finally, we have an extra special guest for this episode. While probably more comfortable getting assaulted by thugs in his Malibu beach trailer, he could just as easily snoop on you with a telephoto lens from his green LeBaron convertible or opine about running into assholes while donning a Stetson hat. Please welcome Josh Dugan of the Munch My Benson podcast. To quote Raylan Givens, you run into an asshole in the morning, you ran into an asshole. You run into assholes all day. You're the asshole. Um, for the record, I enjoy running into assholes all the time <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> to learn more about how we came up with these top 16 TV dicks, check out the quick preview recap on our main feed or become a Patreon supporter of the podcast for exclusive access to the full part one. Make sure you also head to greatpopculturedebate.com to find the downloadable bracket for this episode so you can make your picks and play along with us at home. And with that out of the way, let's put out an APB for awesomeness as we move on to these debates. First up, it's a unanimous decision as one seed veronica mars cracked the case and five seed john luther from luther got booted from the competition next just one more thing the majority of the panel wants to move forward three seed colombo from colombo but amy remains transfixed by the steely gaze of two seed detective elliot stabler from law and order svu <laughs> and organized crime amy why does stabler remain a very special unit indeed kate pull on the rumpled raincoat and slyly dole out facts in favor of colombo i'm gonna have have Amy go first. So here's the thing. <laughs> Giant sigh. I, again, like the, the, we just sometimes run into these moments when we're when we're doing this show where I go, why are we having this conversation? Um, Elliot Stabler <laughs> left. Elliot Stabler left Law and Order SVU, and they literally brought back. They made a whole new kind of bad show just because the world missed him. Um, he is everybody's daddy um he's a pretty good detective he does really well um you know he he doesn't follow the law there's really very little order but we we spoke earlier um and something what we'll talk about regularly is what's your what's your rubric here um and josh actually said who do you want to solve your murder i would come back from the dead if elliot stabler was solving my murder <laughs> He would find the person who killed me, and I would be like, here I am, Daddy, I'm back! Um, I, so, <laughs> I realize this is not where you thought I was going. I'm not usually this person. Also, I'm usually on Disney podcasts, and that's it, so it's a little bit different. You're seeing a different side of me now. And I will talk about how I got into crime dramas and episodic, you know, detective shows that was one piece of me. I got into Elliot Stabler because of Elliot Stabler, and I love him for everything that he is. I'm, I realize I'm not making like a, a a full argument here about why he's the best TV detective, other than there are just millions and millions of people fangirling and fanboying and fan daddying over him because he's fabulous. Um, they made a bad show for him, and people watch it. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I, you know, I wasn't expecting us to go to necrophilia uh, this early in the episode uh, as a justification, but I'm so glad we got there. So thank you for that. I'm jumping um, right in. Kate, 
Kate, talk to me about uh, Columbo. Oh boy, Columbo. He so Peter Falk as the he he is hard to beat in terms of like television detectives. His first appearance was in 1968, 1971. It was kind of a series of TV movies. He is a Los Angeles uh, police detective. He shows up in his rumpled uh, raincoat. Thank you, trench yeah, trench coat, trench coat. Trench coat. And he's kind of his hair is kind of a mess, and he's smoking cigars, and he's like, "What are you putting?" The, the thing walk me through this because i don't understand like what's going on and now i sound like natasha leone who is obviously I was gonna say, natasha leone obviously is basically the female she Columbo. is the female Columbo, which is absolutely mm-hmm. explicit and poker face which is a, a goddamn delight yeah. um and it is this sort of tv movie um episodic television movie that is the the pleasure of watching someone solve crimes who is so he's he's a professional he's a detective but he also kind of comes in into these situations as a little bit of an amateur. He looks bumbling, but he's not. He's an excellent detective. He is always thinking. He's always putting stuff together. Peter Falk's performance, absolutely fantastic. He, uh, so part of my rubric was like, is he original for TV? Yes. Does he have a theme song? Not really. Mm. Um, is he a good detective? He's absolutely excellent. And the like Kate special sauce, the pleasure of watching these shows, which I didn't realize the first time I started watching them, that the way a Columbo episode is structured, you are with the murderer at first, you know exactly who did it, you know exactly why they did it, and then the pleasure of the show is watching them go head to head with Columbo and watching him figure out how they did it. And I love him. It's a great argument. Uh, Josh, where are you on this one? I initially voted Columbo. I'm starting to feel conflicted. I mean, not just because I host a fucking S for you podcast, but uh <laughs> I like watching Columbo, but I can't watch it a lot because every episode's, you know, an hour 10 to an hour and a half. Yeah, they're movies. Yeah, they are. Um, Stabler's a mess who we all love to watch solve crimes while knowing he'll never be able to outrun his problem, which is having a family. Every every time he's on a case that hits too close to home, he's like near meltdown, but he's still going to solve the case. I, I think there's more character to Stabler than Columbo. Columbo's just... Um, I think of Columbo and his personal struggles as, you know, once man odyssey against static cling. That's that's really where I think <laughs> it begins and ends there. Um, but um, I first of all, even if I did vote for Columbo, it's a tie and Stabler's a two seed. So he would advance. Um, and I'm sorry. This is my podcast and I am not voting against the magnificent <laughs> buns of Christopher Maloney in round buns two. It's on. not going to happen. <laughs> buns and guns are going to move on. So, Kate, I love you did a wonderful Thank job you. talking about Thank Columbo. you. You're all wrong. Gr- but anyway. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Um, moving on next, it's a unanimous decision as one seed Sherlock Holmes, the Benedict Cumberbatch version from Sherlock, deduced that four seed Mare Sheehan from Mare of East Town was simply no contest. Uh, next, it's prestige detective solving crimes with possibly supernatural overtones as three seed agent Dale cooper from twin peaks and seven seed rust cole from true detective are up at bat i will exit the red room and speak on dale cooper while kate gets on the case for rust cole um i will say this about dale cooper twin peaks changed tv in a lot of ways mm-hmm. we didn't have anything like twin peaks before it came out and i think dale cooper was the through line for everybody right he's this someone completely new to this bizarre town in the pacific northwest and he is slowly he's a very straight by the book dude and he is peeling back this absolute wackadoo (laughs) case and i i tried for my rubric to try to figure out are they good detectives more often than not it was very hard because most of these are procedurals and they always find the, the the bad guy by the end of it and regardless Dale Cooper is a very good detective who is chasing leads that are effing wild, like things that you would never think to look at, Mm -hmm. right? And he is on it. So I do think that is remarkable. I think he's great. I will make the argument here, and I'm I'm excited for people to tell me that I'm an ignorant slut, um, but... It's interesting to me that only Rust Cole from True Detective got Mm -hmm. nominated for this bracket out of all of the detectives. And is he the best of all? All of them, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. With that, I'll h- hand it over to Kate. I think Russ Cole is the most pop culturally 
like punctured of all, like he's the one that who like hit the most in pop culture as a detective from true detective because it's matthew mcconaughey because it was this great this is like kind of the beginning of the mcconaissance we're like oh all right all right all right like there's something <laughs> there that's like deep and haunting and like i feel it i mean he is he's not an adaptation it's original for television i believe that nick i can't think of his last name i wrote it had written yeah had written some like written some fiction but like i believe that russ cole is is um original for television it's a very specific different point it's a noir point of view it's a existentialist nihilist detective point of view which you don't see necessarily outside of noir right like this is taking it into a tv detective show and bringing this kind of noir sensibility to it um but like this just kind of came out of nowhere people got completely a like obsessed with it russ cole is a terrific detective he does not give up he is a true believer even though he doesn't really believe in anything which is of course why the reveal in the end is that he does actually come to believe in something or like have have an existential experience that is transcendent um dale cooper is kind of the anti-rust cole he looks into dale looks into the abyss and is like hmm I'm going to have some pie. Like he's just, <laughs> he's just this like bulletproof kind of, I don't want to say he's like a cockeyed optimist because like he's sees some dark shit, but he just sort of keeps persevering. And, and I think what allows him to be a great detective in this wild situation that has no concrete solution and is actually about evil and it's unknowable wildness, right? Like the way that Dale uses chance and there's that episode where he sets up the, like they're like throwing knives or something at something. He's like, we're going to try this experiment to like figure out how to, what our leads are. And like, that's David Lynch, A of all, (laughs) right? Like in his creative process. But that's also the way that, Dale Cooper is unlike any detective on TV before or since, with the possible exception of the the existential detectives on Board to Death, which I have not seen, but I hear is great. Okay, great. Uh, where are you on this one? Josh? Oh, I'm. Oh, sorry, I'm on Dale Cooper too. I didn't mention. Oh, okay. I argued for Rust, but I'm on Team Dale. I'm, I'm Josh, on where are you? Team Rust. He okay. he won't let that case die for what seventeen years. It's somewhere in that ballpark. I think it's seventeen years, but that's just off the top of my mm-hmm. head. I just think it's Rust. I mean, I, I like Dale Cooper. Okay. Don't see the doggedness in Dale Cooper that I see in Russ Cole. Okay. Did Amy, you watch you The Return? Understand? I haven't watched The Return yet. I can't make myself do it. Amy, where are you? I don't have a super, super strong opinion here, but I love Matthew McConaughey. And I Matthew McConaughey might have a little bit of Elliot Stabler kind of going for him here. So, Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Some of that energy. So Dale Cooper is a three seed. Russ Cole is a seven seed. I will say this, Kate, you made an interesting point. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is fair, but I'm going to take it that ultimately Dale Cooper is not a super successful detective because he's he can't solve the wildness of evil. Can't right? be solved. And nobody can. Nobody can. Nobody can. Yep. Right. Like, but he doesn't and, and stop. That's fair. He doesn't stop. But there is something I find um, fulfilling and compelling as a viewer that Rust also went 17 years chasing this case, and he did finally get resolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't be mad at me, Kate, but I think I'm going to give it to Rust as well. It's all right. It's cool. Me and Dale and Dougie. And Columbo. You're going to have a great... We're going to uh, have an amazing time. We're just going to yeah. like go to the old detective's home. Kate, and like, you did a really good job. You did a really Thank good you. job arguing for something that you weren't planning on voting for. So I mean, it's really your own call. It's awesome. Pie for everyone. Mm-hmm. Another unanimous victory, this time for one seed Jessica Fletcher from Murder, she wrote, who penned the unfortunate bracket demise of four seed Jake Peralta from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> Next, the panel is evenly split between two 80s icons, six seed Thomas Mag from Magnum mm. PI and two seed Velma Dinkley from Scooby Doo. Josh, why should we continue to say aloha to Magnum? I will explain jinkies and try to rescue Velma. I'm going to have Josh go first. Ferraris and mustaches. Yeah, that's that's boom. the argument. Mic that's drop. it. Um, <laughs> it is interesting to me that of all the eight, like none of the Miami Vice guys got put onto this list. I, that Magnum. was another. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're not Thomas Magnum. That's right. Uh, and so for my rubric, I will say. First, let's discuss the fashion. They are both icons. Magnum P.I. made it cool for men to wear barely buttoned Hawaiian shirts and short shorts, an mm-hmm. aesthetic I literally wear to this very day that is not an exaggeration. <laughs> While Velma was giving us an autumnal fantasy with a baggy sweatshirt, pleated miniskirt, and knee socks. Hello, it's fashion. Look it up. They're tied. They're tied in that respect for me. 
Velma was literally the only member of Mystery Incorporated to bring anything of substance <laughs> to the table. It's true. She was smart. It's true. She was tenacious. She's the one who figured it all out before anybody else, and then she wouldn't say anything until like the last two seconds of the episode. She carries a lot of dead weight. Velma, she does carry... Like, come on. I love Daphne. She's pretty, but what else is she bringing to the table? Nothing. I mean, ascots, ascots, sure. Fred. But I, I just, I don't get it. And I also have to say that Velma is kind of... Um, she's pushing boundaries, right? So she is a canonically bisexual icon, and that happened long before the much reviled mini Kaling Velma series that released earlier this year. James Gunn intended for her to be romantically interested in Daphne in the early 2000s live action films, mm -hmm. and in the Mystery Incorporated cartoon, it was also intended for her to be bi. <clears throat> I'm not sure why people lost their minds when Velma came out, but of course they did. Does that make her a great detective? I don't know, but she is different from anybody else on this list. Mm -hmm. That being said, and this is literally the truth magnum pi is one of the definitive sexual awakenings of my life i have literally <laughs> in my living room hanging all of my 80s crushes an illustration of them playing strip poker magnum pi is on it that is the truth i can put a photo of it up on social media i'm very swayable on this amy where are you um i'd have to give it to, to magnum here just because because of the mustache I also need to make it very clear that we're talking about the OG Tom Selleck yes. Magnum P.I. Oh, and not yes. the update. Yes. Nothing against it. I'm sure it's lovely. But we're talking about Magnum P.I. from the 1980s. Where are you, Kate? I am going to give it to Magnum P.I. because it was such a... It, its influence on television, uh, I think, was was different than the influence that like scooby-doo i think influenced like kids and stoner culture uh, yeah, yeah yeah and, and but and stoner culture yeah and just like culture in general but i feel like magnum pi influenced what was on our televisions yeah i'm not mad about it so i believe that is the votes for magnum so he will advance into next round and for that i have to say my glasses i can't see without my glasses <laughs> that's the thing right like she was the only one doing any detecting but you could just like kneecap her if you took off her glasses like just yep. talk about a fatal flaw <laughs> God bless her. Next, it's an SVU smackdown as four seed John Munch is currently poised to advance over one seed Olivia Benson. Mm. My God. Kate, play good cop to ensure that Munch advances to the Elite Eight. I'll play bad cop and read you your Miranda rights, I mean, in favor of Olivia Benson. I'm going to have Kate go first here. This is an impossible thing. There's, there, as we discussed in the open, the beginning of the first episode, there's, I come from the standpoint that there is entirely too much law and order on this bracket. <laughs> But Olivia Benson, Buckle up, kids. here we go. But <laughs> Olivia Benson is one of the ones that I would put on a detective bracket regardless, along with Lenny Briscoe. We'll get to him. Um, but Munch, again, as we discussed, like Richard Belzer's, um, what's his first name? John. John. Richard Belzer. John, John Munch. John, 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 yeah. John Munch is a really unique d television detective and that his character has showed up in 10 different television shows as this as this detective and sort of Dick Wolf spinoffs and procedurals and crime dramas, etc. But also on 30 Rock and on what was the other Arrested one that was like Arrested Development as this character, right? Like, so that's he he is a linchpin in television and a detective. That's my argument. for him. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. So now I'm going to tell you why you're all wrong. Um, Olivia Benson is the longest running <laughs> primetime live action character of all time josh is shaking his head is that not no, accurate? it is i'm just disagreeing with you it's, it's, <laughs> okay that's just fine disagreeing with the facts yes. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's it's America 2023. <laughs> Everything's up for grabs. Um, Mariska Hargitay has played her since September 1999. Damn! That is remarkable. And she has appeared in 538 episodes mm. of SVU mm. and 559 <laughs> in Law and Order overall. That is astounding. One of the characters she beat out for that superlative is one John Munch, who had appeared as a regular in seven seasons of Homicide Life on the Street and then 15 on SVU, but Olivia is now two years up on him for that respect. Benson has moved up through the ranks of the NYPD, from detective to sergeant to lieutenant, and now is a captain. I can't think of another character in any long-form fiction where you've legitimately followed their career like that. I actually genuinely find it impressive. She's also notable for her approach to the victims of the crimes. She was intended to be their voices, to give viewers insight into what they went through, but still had the agency to get justice. And I think she's been remarkably successful in that, especially because because Olivia herself is a victim in her personal life, a daughter by rape, emotionally and physically abused by her mother. My final selling point, international music superstar, trademark, Taylor Swift, named her cat Olivia Benson. <laughs> I rest my case. 
Amy, where are you? Munch. Um, you know what Olivia ben- <gasps> Olivia Benson might have some cats <gasps> named after her, but was there is when you look up Detective Munch, is there also a Muppet? Because Detective Munch actually has a Muppet version of him on Sesame Street. He is the overall ultimate detective. Yep. John, I see a lot of agreement John, from Josh. The John Munch Muppet is so pure. Does he eat cookies? Okay. That is how that is that is that is helping your your case. Josh, talk to me about you because I feel like you've got to have some conflicting thoughts on Olivia Benson as she is the other namesake. Actually, these are this is your podcast. The, welcome to your life, Josh. This is your podcast at war. Yeah. Um, yeah, literally, much my Benson. Um, I just I think it's too hard to undo the last like eight years of Olivia Benson the character. It's really hard to watch Olivia Benson do anything post season 17 or so it's just th- th- this is way too close to home for me because <laughs> I, I, sure. I have to you know s- sit through season 19 episodes uh randomly and uh, there are so many really bad ones and bad ones where she's doing bad work and munch wasn't around for the bad old days uh or the bad new days rather <laughs> i mean part of the problem is they just needed to give olivia storylines but they're almost always sure. bad well that's a very compelling argument and the fact that someone whose podcast is named for these characters has mm-hmm. weighed in on which is the one to go with also it's a three to one here i have to cede the floor and we will advance john munch into round three finally it must be a weekend on cable because the law and order marathon continues it's six seed finn tutuolo versus lenny briscoe from rg law and order a two seed josh explain why finn should advance here amy compose your ode to briscoe i'm gonna have amy go first as she has been like rhapsodizing both lenny briscoe and the late jerry orbach as i said from the start law and order svu is not the best law and order law and order was the best law and order and it was mainly because of jerry orbach he pulled it together he he worked with so many different types of partners in the show where he was working with ray green he uh, with ray with green he uh, you want him to be your dad in some ways even though he's this troubled former alcoholic um He's got his own troubled backstory that, again, I think that something that we've talked about in and out here and why we basically just eliminate Olivia Benson is that you could have a backstory, but it doesn't become the story. Um, Lenny Briscoe sits through this show for 11 seasons and his story weaves in and out, but it's not the story. It's important to his character. You, t- you learn about his daughters and his fractured relationships. One of them eventually shows back up. She has a drug problem now. You see how that's related to him. And I think he's the most quintessential New York detective. Mm, um, yeah. You talk about a lot with Sex and the City. that New York plays like the fifth character. Obviously, I think in Law and Order, New York plays a character. But... I don't know. I I could go on and on about how much I love Lenny Briscoe. Uh, That's that. They did a great job laying the the groundwork there. Josh, talk to me about Finn Tutuolo. Finn will go undercover for months and months to take down a narcotics ring, torpedoing his family in the process. Sure, he'll ask the questions you need it asked whenever something completely insane happens, but he'll also bust up daycare meth labs, Upper East Side child (laughs) sex slavery or child slavery rings, and child farm labor slash sex slavery rings, while having enough heart to make sure that the wrong guy shouldn't go away on something as piddly as a gun charge losing the weapon in transit he'll call in ringers from the hip-hop community for juicy guest spots while studying for the sergeant's exam by playing a tape under his pillow while he sleeps (laughs) then he'll virtually always advocate for the victim and if it's early season as for you he'll be doing so while wearing sick fucking threads The best question to ask here is who do you want to spend time with while having a crime solved? I think that answer is pretty clearly Finn. I don't know. I want to drink with Finn. And you know who I can't drink Mm. with? Lenny Briscoe. He could have a Shirley Temple. Mm. Kate, where are you on this one? I think I have to give it to Lenny. I think he has that like crotchety kind of like, hey, New York energy. I gravitate toward it. I Have you watched a late season, like a recent episode when it doesn't have Finn? And do you see how much of a hole that leaves? Like, Well, mm, I haven't, but I can imagine. I can absolutely imagine. Unbearable. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 
So I feel as though Kate and Amy are unlikely to sway here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my vote is up for grabs. I gravitate towards Lenny, but I think you did a very good argument, Josh. That being said, Finn is a six seed, Lenny's a two. So even if I did, uh, well, I guess if I switched, no, even if I, if I, it would be Lenny regardless. Yeah. So we will advance Lenny into round three. That is the end of round two. We're going to take a quick break and pose for our mug shots. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, Squirrel Friends, Curtis here from the Great Pop Culture Debate. We hope you're enjoying this episode of the podcast, but did you know, much like RuPaul's Drag Race, if you're not a Patreon supporter, honey, you're only getting half the story. Our patrons at the $5 level gain access to exclusive content for each episode, where the debaters go from the top 32 competitors down to the sweet 16. It's like a whole bonus episode for each topic. So if you love our content and want more of it, head to patreon.com backslash great pop culture debate and become a Patreon supporter today. And we are back for round three of our best TV detective debate. Before we get into the Elite Eight, I want our panelists to share their social media so people can use you as alibis when they inevitably commit murders. And also let us know what else you're working on. Amy, how can people find you? Uh, if you'd like to see some cute kids, an occasional dog, and my political views, um, you can find me over on Instagram, Amy Pilot. That's two T's, like an airplane pilot with an extra T, uh, uh, on Instagram. Occasionally, I'm on the Twitter, but, you know, I think we're all leaving that space. So that's Amy SP83. And where I'm really at is on the Peloton, Amy Spins 83. Kate, where can people find you? And what else are you working on? I mean, technically, I'm also on the Cursed Bird at Kate Coolia, but not really, um, and not for much longer. Uh, but if you want to see pictures of my adorable cat, uh, Gomez and Ramona, I am on uh, Instagram at Gomez Rack. Um, and I am a writer of books, and my books are sort of quasi mysteries. So my second book, Bellwether Rhapsody, is a cross between Glee and The Shining, and there's a little bit of like existential detecting. And my third book, Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghost, is a little more of like an Indiana Jones treasure hunty thing, but there is like mystery elements to them. And there are always dead bodies there are always dead bodies so just like in her real life and it's yes, true you, so yes feel free buy them from your favorite indie bookseller <laughs> yeah <laughs> josh talk to us about where people can find you and a little bit about your podcast uh well i am on twitter and blue sky as old man dugan old man and then d-u-g-g-a-n we uh, i co-host a podcast about law and order svu which is apparently heavily featured in this episode of yes <laughs> great podcast debate or great pop culture jesus christ uh great <laughs> great pop culture <laughs> debate um yeah so uh it's a ribald podcast that you wouldn't listen to on speaker at work thank you again for being <laughs> a guest this week and uh, as for me, you can find me at Eric Resniak. That's E R I C R E Z as in zebra, S as in snake, N as in Nancy, Y A K on Twitter and Insta, or just message at Great Pop Culture Debate on Insta slash Threads. I don't know what the hell we're doing there, but we're there. Or at GPCD on Mastodon, where we've actually um, been doing quite a bit. So, with that being said, let's move on to round three before the commissioner fires us. Is this because I'm gay? So we're just going to go around the horn. <laughs> Uh, the first matchup. Uh, th this is a long order episode, folks. Oh, I got my the dreams. first matchup. <laughs> it's uh, one seed Veronica Mars versus two seed Elliot Stabler. I'm going to start at the top of the order with Amy. Where are you on this? I'm one? probably not going to win. I'm just going to profess my love to Elliot Stabler, and I'm still going that way. Josh. V Mars. V Mars. Kate. I have to go Veronica Mars, but I, I also have to state for the record that all of these matchups are just like incredible two handers waiting to happen. Like oh, yeah. I could watch the special our our producers making a face about what a two hander is. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say uh Chris Maloney, I'm ready to give you a two hander whenever you're available. I took that two hander. Um absolutely, yeah. Um that being said, um I think I will give it to Veronica Mars. Crossover Cross. episodes. That's <laughs> you can say your version, I'm sticking with mine. Um 
<laughs> I'm going to give it to Veronica Mars here. Um, I think she's a better detective and she had um, a more interesting impact on television. She's the only teenager, I believe, left on our list. She's uh, got a lot of gumption, you know? Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm going against my own rubric here. A big part of that is which of these I'd like to bang. And listen, Kristen Bell's a gorgeous woman, but it's it's a it's neighbor. So we will be advancing Veronica Mars into the final four. Next, it's one seat Sherlock Holmes versus our Cinderella story of the bracket, <laughs> Rust Pole from True Detective season one. You're thinking about the uh, two-hander, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> always always uh i'm gonna start with kate uh are you sherlock or are you rust and we uh, haven't talked about sherlock at all so yeah i guess I'll, I'll sort of talk a little bit my feelings about sherlock the first like couple series of that were brilliant and so fun benedict cumby buns is an excellent excellent sherlock and the stephen moffat sort of like wheels within wheels look at how clever i am it's like really <laughs> really like a good fit for the sherlock story um it loses its way diminishing returns after he jumps off the roof of the hospital no spoilers yep. uh but for a couple seasons it's really fucking brilliant um i've been swearing a lot on this podcast i don't know what that's about. it's fine uh and but and so like it's like a couple seasons of brilliantness um Versus, like, the single season uh, of True Detective that Rust Cole is in, which is just, like, exceptional. And in some ways, like, we might come talk about this, because, like, if Rust Cole goes up against the Mars, it's like they both had two extraordinary, perfect seasons. I think I got to give it to Rust, because I never got tired of him the way I got tired of Sherlock. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Josh, where are you on this one? I think I still have to stick with Sherlock. I mean, I, I okay. think... Rust is just one season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but the Sherlock seasons are Sherlock short, too. Altogether? They're very short. But wasn't yeah. True Detective only eight episodes? Maybe it was ten, Probably. but I thought it was eight. Maybe ten. Okay, so you're sticking with Sherlock. Yeah, I mean, it's close. These are all close, but I, I think okay. Sherlock edges it out. Amy? I, so I, I've never actually watched a whole episode of Sherlock, um, but I do know the Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, um, and I like him a lot. That season of True Detective was excellent. We're not talking about the show. We're not talking about what the best show is. Sure. Um, <laughs> sure. In which case, Law and Order S for you would go out the window. But um, but so I for that I'm going to say Rust because I saw it. I enjoy the character. I would like him to solve mm -hmm. my murder. He would stick with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have one for Sherlock uh, and two for Rust. Correct. Correct. I'm going for Sherlock here. Mm. And ultimately, it's because who's the better detective on TV is the way I'm coming at it. Mm. And I think Sherlock's detecting in that show is superlative. Yes, it's not an original TV to TV character, but I think that Moffat's interpretation of him is obviously so highly based mm. off of the source material, but very contemporary, very new. Very clever. Like, very clever. Very clever. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, I give it to also, it's a one seed and a seven seed. So um, I, I have to honor that uh, I think Russ has had a great run, but I think it's time to to move him out. Uh, so all right, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sherlock Holmes advances to the final four. Next, Jessica Fletcher, a number one seed. We haven't talked about her at all. Mm. Versus Thomas Magnum from Magnum PI, a six seed. I'm going to start in the middle. Josh, where are you? Jessica Fletcher. All right, Amy, where are you? Jessica Fletcher. Kate Reculia. There is one answer. <laughs> and it is jessica fletcher i will miss thomas magnum <laughs> and his um life-changing chest hair um but uh i i have to read the writing on the wall uh and that's writing that she wrote so it's jessica fletcher yep. advancing to the final four and finally in a in a matchup that is sure to break uh poor amy pilot and twain it's john munch versus lenny briscoe munch is a four seed briscoe is a two i'm gonna start with kate where are you I I'm a chaos demon. I'm going to give it to Munch because of the the uh, the sheer wild wonderfulness of him being in so many shows as one character. And like Lenny okay. Briscoe is fantastic, but Lunch is Lunch. <laughs> lunch Munch Munch is the er detective in that way for okay. for NBC properties. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Josh, where are you? I don't find myself <clears throat> presently wanting to watch old Law and Orders, the original series. I think that's got to be the determining factor between these two. It's super close, but like, do I want to watch a 
peak Neil Barry years SVU with Munch heavily featured, absolutely. And it's also not Briscoe, my Benson. Yeah. Wow. So I think, yeah. <laughs> Um, which is even more filthy. Amy, <laughs> you said you might abstain from this, but I do need to ask you for a vote. Where are you? These are my daddies, but in a very different way than Elliot Stabler. Um, yeah. <laughs> He's your zaddy. He is. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 yes, yes. Um, I, I could go either way on this. I actually do really like the, the, the argument that Kate just gave. So I'm going against my own bracket because I actually originally had Lenny Briscoe winning this for for the whole thing. But again, that was eight months ago when I filled out the bracket. So I think that now yeah. after being reunited with the Sesame street version of Munch, it is Munch. <laughs> I love that. That is the capstone to the argument. That's perfect. He's, he's essentially the, what we're introducing to children is this is the quintessential TV detective guys. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I, to me, he's like the multiversal detective. He's everywhere, everything, yeah. all at once. Yeah. Yes. All right. So there we have it. John Munch is advancing to the final four. Whew. That is it for round three. We're going to take a quick break to interview our special celebrity guest star of the week who absolutely committed that murder in question. We will be right back after these messages. And we are back with the final four of our best TV detective debate. At this point in the show, I always like to take a step back and see if the final four matches up with where I thought I would, we would go. Um, I think overall it's 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 pretty pretty solid. I'm, I'm glad that we have one Law and Order representative after having 320 in the original <laughs> bracket of 32, which is especially impressive. But I think you've got a nice uh, kind of diversity in terms of eras of show of types of show you've got prestige you've got teen you've got classic uh kind of um murder of the week you've got the law and order franchise i think it's a really good final four and we're going to jump right into it first up it's veronica mars versus sherlock holmes and these are both one seeds i'm going to start with our special guest josh which one are you going with veronica mars for all intents and purposes veronica mars is taking down murderers sometimes mass murderers while not even being able to drink legally, all while working side <laughs> cases on a weekly basis. She does this all surreptitiously, having to hide most of her investigations from her loving father, a very capable, wrongly disgraced former sheriff. Virtually every person she's investigating is bigger than her and could very quickly fuck her up. Yet she virtually never gets bested. She does this all with just a best friend with access to the school's records, a bud who's a teen hacker, an on-again, off-again love interest with a massive self-destructive streak, but who'll throw down with anyone if she's in trouble, and a, put, and a pit bull named Backup. She bolsters her slipshod support network with an ability to outsmart just about anyone, even if that means getting a little sketchy on the way. And whatever you do, don't fucking cross Veronica Mars. She will not forget, and you will get your comeuppance. We live for pettiness on this podcast. Signature so. color. That's right. We love it. Uh, Amy, where are you on this one? Veronica Mars. Kate. I have a shirt that says always take backup. So, Aww. yes. <laughs> Veronica Mars. <laughs> and that's something because she's a cat person. So I am. Yeah. I am. Um, I will make it a clean sweep. As much as I said, uh, Sherlock Holmes is great in the, the previous round. And I do believe that he's great. Mm -hmm. Veronica Mars is an original for TV creation. Yes. And therefore, to me, is going to trump Sherlock in this respect. Um, and she also ticks basically every other box that I have. Mm -hmm. So uh, Veronica Mars is into the final two. Next, it's Jessica Fletcher, a one seed versus John Munch, a four seed. Ooh. Mm. Um, I'm going to start with, well, Kate, you haven't talked about Jessica Fletcher at <sighs> all yet. And I know you're dying too. I am. Ha! But not murder. 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 <laughs> yep. So Jessica Fletcher is the, am I using this word correctly? The apotheosis, the Zenith. She is, she is the greatest television detective she is an amateur she is proof of concept what if miss Murple was agatha christie and was mm -hmm. writing those books but was an incredibly intelligent oh someone someone's someone's the highest point in the development of something apotheosis thank you producer curtis yes i used that <laughs> word correctly go me um that comes from growing up watching a shit ton of murder she wrote <laughs> so uh 
the worldview so murder she wrote was developed by the same people who developed colombo and i think a lot of what they did with colombo they refined in murder she wrote where she's she's an amateur she's different it's just an hour there are tons of guest stars my god watching the show it's like a thousand hey it's that guys and and she solves a murder in in the full you know 45 minutes whatever with with commercials she solves it with tenacity with observational acuity with uh compassion she's extremely compassionate um and her her worldview on murder which is what feels sort of what felt like really revelatory to me as a kid was that humans do bad things and it's you can still enjoy life <laughs> like right which is why people keep coming back to the cozy murder mystery right like she's the anti-rust coal she is I, I don't even know if i would say she's an optimist she's just sort of like well we'll just carry on she's a good yankee stock that's like well you you murdered your best friend with poison because you found out she was sleeping with your husband but i still have friends <laughs> <laughs> uh the shows are you know they they do kind of get diminishing returns after a while angela lansbury as a as the force behind the show like worked like a beast for years uh angela lansbury would advocate for older actors to be in episodes of murder she wrote to help them with residuals and help me make sure they could continue to keep their side cards and get their insurance and all this stuff i love that right just like the whole enterprise of it is so like beyond the detective stuff of it like just like good compassionate like being a person making media right that's in the background but she's a terrific detective and the theme song is iconic mm -hmm. um it occurred to me Amy, as i throw it to you for a vote that we missed an opportunity to have a mrs potts versus lumiere yes. in the final four matchup yes. and uh i'm sure amy is over here fuming right now but amy it's oh. mrs potts versus the Munch Monster from Sesame Street. Kate, you were going to say I, one last There thing. was another thing I was going to say. We do, by choosing Jessica Fletcher and Murder, She Wrote, get backdoor Jerry Orbach and Magnum P.I. because there is a crossover between Magnum P.I. and Murder, She Wrote. And Jerry Orbach showed up on a backdoor pilot that never went anywhere as a uh, Boston private detective named Harry McGraw on Murder, She Wrote. So Kate, we're talking about the this, ecosystem. <laughs> you are going to pitch backdoor Magnum P.I. Yes! across my plate after everything we've been going Backdoor, through this episode jerry orbeck and magnum pi I, i'll pass on jerry but magnum will have words amy where are you between munch and uh just um <laughs> i hold on i'm gonna find out if angela lansbury was on sesame street i'm sure, I'm sure she was but but I'm sure she was but, but munch has his own character like olivia um mariska hargitay has also been on sesame street but like as mariska hargitay Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure many of these people have. Richard Belzer got a Muppet. Um, I understand that I will probably not win this battle, and I understand we're probably going to say goodbye to Law & Order now. <laughs> um, with that said, I still do love, 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 love John Munch, and I, to Josh's point, could go back at any day and put on an episode of Prime, Prime Munch talking to the people with the tinfoil hat, um, <laughs> which was one of my favorite episodes. And I could watch that over and over again because he was truly brilliant um, in all forms of, of him showing up as Detective Munch across the detective world. So you're going, I'm going to stick with Munch and I understand I'm probably going to lose. Josh, where are you on this one? Munch. So that's two for Munch, and I'm the deciding vote here because mm -hmm. in a tie, Fletcher wins. She's a one seed. Munch is a four seed. I think Munch's votes were diluted because there were so many Law & Order people on this bracket. I, I absolutely think that was going on. <clears throat> However, when I was initially putting together this bracket, it immediately was thought, like, what are the ones that come to my mind? Jessica, Jessica Fletcher, Fletcher was easily the first one. Like but immediately to my mind. She still has make... pop culture penetration, the gifts. <laughs> Kate, are you trying? <laughs> I'm not, we actually. We started this episode with talking about necrophilia and you keep going there. I, I, I um, brought the necrophilia to the table. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie, for that. Sorry. Um, no, but uh, in all seriousness, um, 
it is like you were saying that law and order uh munch was kind of your introduction to detectives murder she wrote was for me for sure i remember it being on when i was a kid watching it my dad was cutting my toenails right like it's been <laughs> on it was on forever and um i think she is she ticks my boxes she has she's an incredible detective and she's iconically tv mm-hmm. um I also am the fan of the theory. Like, how many how many people did she serve solve their murders? How many hundreds, hundreds of people? Hundreds, right? Hundreds. And how likely is it she killed most of them? Because it's who, pretty likely. <laughs> who is involved in that many murder cases? And at no point does someone be like, "Can we have a conversation, like, just between us in private? Like, what is happening with this?" The woman? murder rate in Cabot Cove. I'm just gonna like crazy, gonna say that. crazy. Don't yeah. go there. <laughs> no, <laughs> stay away from Maine um, entirely well yeah um but i think for me that like i i go to jessica fletcher as my go-to one i realize that my law and order colleagues here are probably furious with me right now but (laughs) jessica is the one that i think of as the better detective i mean josh you'd made the argument i think at one point that like munch very rarely drives the actual detective work in an episode correct well in an episode of us he's as for you, yes. Um, but to me, Jessica Fletcher's where I go to when I think of TV detectives. I'm sorry. So please forgive me, Amy and Josh. That's a tie and a one seed would go to the final two, which gives us the final two of Veronica Mars versus Jessica Fletcher. Two women. Mm. Didn't see that coming. Woo! And I, I love this. Sisters are doing it for themselves. I'm going to start with our special guest. Who you pick here? Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars. Amy Pilot. Jessica Fletcher. Kate, I have a feeling. I yes, although I love Veronica Mars. They both have banging uh theme songs. Veronica Mars had one perfect season. Uh Jessica Fletcher shaped culture for years and continues to shape it and touch it. Yeah, it's Jessica Fletcher. I just am sitting here in my mind and I see the meme of her hungrily eating, eating a the bowl popcorn. Of... Yes. <laughs> That's the I Patrick McGowan episode. <laughs> yes. Um, so with that being said, I'm giving it to uh, Jessica Fletcher, I'm very sorry, Josh. You've been a great sport. Thank you for coming. Uh, there you have it. Our pick for the best detective winner is Jessica Fletcher from Murder, She Wrote. Do you agree? Do you think we should turn in our badges and leave the force in shame? Tell us how you really feel by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Mastodon. While you're there, make sure you subscribe and follow the podcast so you can hear about what new debates are coming soon, vote in open polls, and even decide which topics we tackle next. If you really enjoy this episode please take a minute to like and rate the episode on apple spotify or whatever platform you listen on i want to say thank you to my panel next on our list is detecting where in the world carmen san diego actually is and thank you for listening if you loved what you heard please consider supporting us on patreon where you can get even more exclusive content and you get episodes a whole day early we hope you have a good one and remember everyone is entitled to their wrong opinions chung chung